Rich, this concrete looks like just regular average concrete that you'd pour in a residential slab. It is, except that this is probably one of the most technologically advanced and sexy concretes you can get, Chris. <laughs> Reason being is an ordinary concrete in a regular house slab, you would have 100% uh, would be made of 100% cement. Here, the homeowners have elected to go with a 51% fly ash replacement, meaning we've taken half the cement out and replaced it with 51% fly ash. Okay, fly ash, what is it? The majority of the power, electrical power in the U.S. is generated from coal fire power plants. And that's where we do basically take a, a piece of coal, heat it up, and we generate power from that. Well, much like a charcoal briquette, when you take that block of coal and it breaks down, one of the waste products from that is an ash material, just like anybody would find in the bottom of their barbecue grill. And they developed billions billions of tons of this waste ash and they sat it out and they would landfill it. And so in the late 70s people looked at this fly ash and said you know gee that's a really big pile let's put it in concrete. And so over the next 30 years we developed the scientific basis to actually realize that putting fly ash in concrete is better for the concrete chemically, strength-wise, durability, and placeability. And so we get all of these benefits and we're not landfilling a waste product. Because in reality, this slab, which normally dries to 3,000 PSI, this is going to dry almost double that, correct? And in fact, it'll probably even greater than that with fly ash. I'm going to get 6,000, 7,000 PSI out of this concrete, double the strength, and still manage to consume a waste byproduct. One of the questions that I get constantly is, because it's stronger, there is a perception that it is somehow weaker. Well, what happens is in a lot of cases, people say it's too strong. It's almost like saying it tastes too good. <laughs> um, in this particular case, a lot of that has to do with the general engineering design behind a residential house slab. They're designed to 3,000 PSI. The beam sizes, the reinforcement, all designed to that. All of a sudden we show up and we've got this type of concrete that's 6,000 PSI. Well, the engineering didn't work backwards from that answer. So in a lot of cases there's that perception that it can be too, it tastes too good, it can be too <laughs> strong. But in most cases for the general homeowner, for the property owner and the value of this structure, it is a better product for the, for the house. You are just, you're just great to talk to. Dr. Rich Seishi with Lattimore Concrete. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.